what is up? Let's see, man, that sure seems bright. Let me see if I can unbright this thing. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen. That's bright. Ah, I don't have to squint. So much better. All right. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. We have, when does it start? A lot of content yesterday. So I put out all those videos from the Monday Morning Live Summit. So those are up, and I also have them in the description. So if you want to, if you look in the description, you'll see the links to those videos. You want to watch them. And they're pretty fun. All right. Namaste, OCC Brown, uh, Flavio Leos, Gordon Bennett, Biotech Breakout, John P1, Richisi, 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 Joe, what's up, man? Scott, Ella Paul, Dan in the house, Tim, what's up? Dubai Money, Demayan, Brenda, Krabby, what's up? Adam, what's going on, buddy? All right, so we'll get started. Oh, for those of you who were in the uh, Texas, the Dallas, the whatever, um, there was an interview I did while I was at the SIBO that was on bad radio. And that actually, they replayed it yesterday, but it was on, I think it was originally on Wednesday. It was Wednesday, and then they replayed the interview, I believe, yesterday. Yeah, my buddy Chris said, hey, man, I'm listening to you on bad radio. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So that's 1310, the ticket. Bad radio for anybody that likes really good sports radio. That's 1310. Uh, bad radio. Dan and Jake and their whole crew. They're really good. They're funny. They're kind of snarky. They may not be loved by everyone, but they are beloved. Which is a weird, probably distinction without difference. Kenneth, what's going on? All right. Uh, and uh, shout out to my buddy Drake who uh, knocked out his Series 7 a few days ago, which for those of you, if you've taken a Series 7, you know it is no joke. It is a lot of stuff. So good for him. Uh, another, and he actually has some crypto knowledge too, so it's nice to have a somebody going into financial management, anal analysis, you know, investment advisor space that actually understands what digital assets are. Valuable. Uh, Luis, Frank, and uh, ooh, I like that. That's kind of a creepy clown. I have a creepy clown. I thought about doing a whole NFT. <laughs> I was going to do a whole NFT series. You know, everybody kind of really bigs up these NFTs. I was just going to do tons of pictures of Creepy the Clown. Like, let's say 100 different, you know how they're all unique? Well, I bought a few years ago, me and my buddy Brando, we were like, I wonder what's the creepiest clown we can find on the internet. So we went to YouTube. We looked up creepy clown. And man, we got one. We got the creepiest clown ever. And we have it. And it's like one of those creepy porcelain clowns. Anyway, maybe I'll do an NFT series of 100 creepy the clown th things, poses or something. Bada bada. Que onda? Okay, so yeah, man, you look official. You got like a white, got like a white coat. I'm guessing you do something official, sciency, medically, something where they like have rooms that have sterilized air and things like that. You're doing. You're probably adding more to humanity than all the rest of us. Uh, let's see, spin. What's going on? Uh, Grimsel E909 Carlson, stress relief. What up? Yeah, man. Okay, shoulder surgery. Oh, I knew it. So, good on you. Okay, I did uh, stem cell and PRP on my knee, and it was good. Uh, yeah, anyway. Okay, so we'll get into it. I didn't, you know, I was looking through the articles today. Um, let's see. 11 a pay, a pay for. 11 a pay for or hap, hap pay for. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Um, I was looking at the news articles today, but they're not all that interesting. I thought, well, we'd go over a few, but they're just not, there's not a lot of exciting, there's not much news right now. Uh, of course, someone drudged up a video of Rao Pal. This guy, man, I'm going to go, 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's an idiot. There, I've said it. You, I know I, I, I angered the two Real Vision fans that are over here, but the guy is an idiot. He was, I think, he, he said that Tara Luna, he actually said this. You can, I think I retweeted it. It's on my Twitter, Nicholas Black 60 on Twitter. He said that, that it, uh, he compared Terra Luna to Ethereum. He said they, they have network effects. This is, of course, before it nuked and melted down. And then he, after comparing Luna to Ethereum, because obviously that's a fair comparison, right? On a quality project, as we all know. Then he goes, oh, um, but Cardano is a scam. I mean, he didn't say it's a scam. He just said it's all ghost. It's all it's all BS because there's no on-chain metrics to which someone quickly pointed out the chart that said other than Bitcoin, it has the most activity of any of the platforms of the protocols. How these dudes, man, why anyone – would believe you know the scams that Real Vision has perpetrated. You guys know this. If you don't listen to me, go look at what they did with Nexus Insurance right before it blew up. They were pimping it out to all their friends. The guy was Remy, Remy, one of the co-founders, and then and then uh, Rao quickly disavowed. Oh, uh, we don't. He doesn't have anything to do with the platform. What do you mean, Rao? He's a co-founder of Real Vision. You lying dick. Then. Guess who was involved in Terra Luna? Well, one, they were pumping it to anyone that would listen. And you think, oh, these guys are so smart. If they're sm so smart, how come they don't know math? How come they don't know basic math? I don't. Why do people keep giving these dudes, look, if you worked at Goldman Sachs and got fired, that doesn't make you special. Dude, look, if I hear someone worked at Goldman Sachs, I'm at first a little bit like, uh, uh. Roger Wren, what's up, man? I'm, that doesn't make me feel good, warm and fuzzy. No, man. Um, where can she learn about minting NFTs? Okay, Red Oak, good question. Um, I would, I would go bang around Nifty Gateway. Okay, go look around Nifty Gateway. Look at the kind of art. Look at what things are selling for. Then I would, then I would just simply Google launching my first. NFT on OpenSea. I know OpenSea sucks, but it's the place to go where you can lazy mint and you don't have to pay. And you could actually park some stuff out there and just and see how it goes. But being successful in the NFT space really means just having a big giant pile of people to sell to. Being a good artist, it doesn't mean that much. I don't mean this in a bad way. It just doesn't mean that much. It's like being a good analyst. It doesn't mean that much. I've got like 14 followers. It doesn't matter. No one cares that I've called every shysty, scammy, garbage, dirt bag in all of crypto. No one cares. There's only like 13 people care. No one else cares. No one cares. In the NFT space, no one cares how good you are. It's how many people you can sell to, which means creating a big, giant, robust community, uh, having a lot of uh, Twitter peeps and a lot of Instagram peeps and a big, giant, fat Discord. It just – it is what it is. It's frustrating. But yeah, yeah. Um, Back to route, and then he talked about UST's 20% return was riskless. I know these guys are such idiots. Rao Powell's an idiot. And worse, this dude's borderline crook. You guys know that. Crook. Crook. He and Remy are crooks. If you tell 300,000 people a day to go buy some protocol, first of all, I don't even think that's legal. I don't think you can do that. They were pumping these things that were obvious – obvious scams go look in any video i've ever done ever go back as far as you'd like unearth whatever you want there's a couple of names that you'll see that i always call out for being scams i'm not the only one i'm not trying to say like i have a like magical power it's just common sense you look at these projects and it's common sense that it's a scam let's see bitconnect yes celsius yes Terra, Luna, yes. Where does the 20% come from? Yes, that's a problem. All algorithmic stable coins, yep. Stolana, yep. Go through the list. Dude, the people at Real, there's some good content on Real Vision, which frustrates me. SL Hines, what's up? There's some good content. 
But dude, Raul and Remy, those guys are are snake. Those guys are snakes. Snakes. I say I'm not a big fan of Novo. Guess who has $300 million worth of, of Luna and, and UST in his portfolio? Like more than 20% of their entire portfolio, bro. That's not competent money management. Oh, what's he? Mm, well, he's a guy that got booted. Uh, sorry. Left Goldman Sachs. And after he left Goldman Sachs, he started his own fund, which he summarily blew up and got kicked out by his own partners of his own fund that he started by. These dudes are not good. You got to look at their DNA. All these people are celebrated that he used to it for Goldman Sachs. Who gives a crap? That doesn't mean anything. I've met one person from Goldman Sachs that's quality. One decent human. One. In many, bro. Many. Anthony Scar Scaramucci. He's the only decent dude that Goldman, as far as I know, that I've met. I haven't met everyone. Of the people that I've met, come into contact with, listen to, talk to, communicate with, whatever. He is the only dude that is decent that gets it. All the rest of these dudes are guessing or they're idiots or they're just crooks. And the thing that I don't get is if you willingly go into a scam and you push this scam on everyone else, you either know it's a scam. It's, it's this. You're either a criminal or an idiot. These guys are either criminals for pumping this dummy token on everybody else or they're idiots. You either don't know it's a scam or you do. You're either a criminal or an idiot because if you pump a scam, you're a criminal. And if you don't know it's a scam, you're an idiot. There's no in between. None. So if these dudes just pumped it on everyone and they knew it was a scam, they're criminals. Raul and Remy, in my opinion, are criminals. Raul is also a borderline idiot. And I would be happy to talk to him in whatever venue he would like. I've reached out to him. I don't rate enough to talk to this dude. He's, he's too busy hucking bullshit on people. And it's just, this whole industry is that way. And I would urge you to assume that everybody is full of shit and they're out to get you. Even me, if you're watching this, you should say, I don't trust this dude. What's his angle? You should say that about everyone. You should be incredibly worried that everyone is trying to stick it to you. Okay? Everyone. And yeah, that's also good advice. Um, if you're looking, if you are looking to launch an NFT project, go to WinMint, go to their Discord. There's tons of people to talk to. They will they will kind of like handhold you and walk you through the process or at least point in the right direction. So if, if NFTs is your thing. All right, Spirella, what's going on? Flying me, what's up? Frax. I don't know enough about Frax. I can't. I, I try not to weigh in on stuff I don't, if I don't even know about it. That's not fair. That's not fair of the project, right? Um. So, yeah, man. Yeah, bro, hit the like. I don't take your money, bro. I just want a little, I want a little digital hug. Can you give me a digital hug, bro? That's all I ask. It's not so much. All right. So we'll take a look at markets, and then I'm going to stick. We're going to just do open Q&A today. No formal show. I'm not going to go through articles, none of that kind of stuff. We'll do that on Money Map. We'll do that on uh, the, which is newly branded, to the American uh, Institute of Cryptocurrency Investors, AICI. AC? IC? IC? IC. Ooh, that sounds cool. IC. Um, so we will do these non-commercial breaks. We'll come right back. And we will look at the markets. We'll do some Q&A. Have a little fun. I'll see you in a second. Jungle in the house. We're going to get Jungle on a show here in a minute. One of these days. Okay, what what cool – I was looking at the, the silly music, our silly background music. I think we're going to try – we haven't tried rock. 
Let's try rock. I'm going to go so it's not overbearing. I've learned that 20, for those of you that use StreamYard, 20 seems to be a fair background kind of musical thing. Anyway, yeah, it's funny. Uh, Jungle and I, we do, we do chat quite a bit. And I urge you, if you're on the Twitters, you need to follow Jungle because he's he's kind of like me. He's like, he digs, he lifts up rocks and he finds little details. He finds DNA under the couch. He's like one of those CSI dudes with a with the uh, the light and then they spray with luminol. You guys know how that works. You spray luminol and luminol, um, it interacts with biological material and uh, then you shine a black light-ish and then you you see where all like the blood splatter and all the DNA. No DNA hides from jungle. Uh, so you should be following him and when you see his stuff, read it because it is poignant. Okay, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm gonna give it a, a guess. Uh, Stavrophoros, Greek maybe. Um, Mika T275. Okay, I gotta I gotta tell you guys something. I gotta tell you guys something. Uh, Mana, no. Well, okay, look, I can't tell you guys what to do or not to do. For me, whenever I say what I would or wouldn't do, it's just what I would or wouldn't do. It's not what you should do or should not do. You do you. Um, and I, I would not be buying into any of the metaverse plays. If you wanna play the metaverse, buy Apple, buy Facebook, Meta, okay? That, that's, how you, that's how you get meaningful metaverse exposure, honestly. Um, Sticks, we are we are moving forward. The problem is we are not going to do anything in a down market. I don't want anybody spending any money that's not on their portfolio. I don't want you perverting your funds. I want everybody being very fiscally sound right now. There's a lot of opportunity. A lot of money is gonna be made from what's going on right now. But you can't make it if you blow your wad on stupid shit. So let's not do that. And guess what, NFTs, in the best of times are stupid shit. So yeah, I don't want you guys. So yes, we the project is ready to launch. We could launch we could launch yesterday. That it, everything's done. The artwork's done, the layers are done. Everything's done, but we are not going to do anything until these are better markets and we can relax a little bit more and we've made some currency units and I, I wouldn't feel like such a dick creating this. Also, there is the thing that I would need I need a team of people. It's not just me and Brandon. We need a team of people to manage Discord, to build a library. Like those are all things that I personally cannot do. Can't. Can't. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to be one of those dudes and hoover up cash from the community that really needs to be redeployed into quality investments, uh, which is what you guys should be doing. Uh, Aussie age? Aussie, Aussie age? Aussie, Aussie age. Aussie Rage. Aussie Rage <laughs> is because you went up and down with the capitalization. Uh, okay. Adam asks, what are your thoughts on the crypto space as a whole experiencing inflation due to new tokens projects constantly spinning up? It's like, oh, you mean you mean project inflation? This The idea of all these new projects being created into existence. Well, that that is weird. Um, but you know what? It's no different than... Um, Ivlik, what's going on? It's no different than what was happening in the kind of right before the dot com meltdown, where you just had companies popping out of nowhere. You know, this this looks it's a lot easier in these down markets to see value. Does that make sense? It's a lot easier to see value. And so I think Barry Vice, what's going on? Don Corbin, what's going on? I think that what you do is in the now time. I really do believe you look at November prices to give you a kind of an idea of where this space will get back to at some point. It's going to get back there. Look at the November cheat sheet. That gives you an idea. Narrow down. Now, when you build your portfolio, however you build it, don't look at the prices when you build your portfolio. That should not be swaying your decisions yet. Step one, write down the quality assets because you're as you're dating these assets. Write down the quality assets that you want to own. Put them on a piece of paper with no other information. Don't think about price, nothing. Just put them on a piece of paper and put down the percentages you want to, re to be represented in your portfolio of 100%. Let's say you have 10 assets 
and you, you want them all equally weighted and you have ten dollars it's going to be one dollar per asset or ten percent so build that build build your very vice what's going on man um build your portfolio on a piece of paper irrespective of prices irrespective i don't know if that's a real word i think that might be a made-up word i know that you guys know irregardless is not a real word right it's regardless irregardless would be with would be the other way <laughs> it would be with regard uh okay um you know what i think coin again not advice i think coin is a really good purchase coin the equity and remember everybody i want you guys to commit this to memory and really quick let me say let me officially say hello to uh i get that a lot don hoop and tony the two cheese heads uh and jas not okay as to this point look coin there's a lot of things not priced into coin i think that their venture arm is not really priced in i think their their nft thing's gonna be kind of a flop ski it has been a flop ski it's unlikely to do anything exciting but i think coin makes sense right now now remember again with equity first call on dividends last call at liquidation do you guys know what that means it's the lowest tier of the capital stack meaning in some insolvency event owning equity means nothing they liquidate all the assets secured note holders secured debt unsecured debt preferred stockholders and then you you're the bottom of the capital stack so you get the first first rights first rights to dividends last rights on liquidation now you then say is liquidation a reality a potential end point for for coinbase i don't think so so since that's off the table and i think we're at a psychological low and i think they're not pricing in their venture arm and the people at coinbase although we may not agree with everything they do they're not stupid dino dawn what's going on jim good to see you johnny d87 uh mark law mark mark lawn loan uh armani sniper princess five son good to see everybody i'm i will bu butcher your names and that's what i do okay um jim ham also hello all right so coin makes sense i think people are mispricing i think a lot of things make sense right now that people are not really looking at if you look at the markets um i mean bitcoin's having a green day but not really right we're still down from we're still down 3k city Midianko, what's going on we, we're still having a huge huge flatness um we've been kind of flat look at the week pretty flat a couple of a couple of assets got beat up it's part of the a-bomb what's the a-bomb you guys hear me say that it's just an easy way of thinking of those kind of core quality assets that i like the a's we could say the a's what are they well they're kind of linked up aren't they Cardano, Ada, Algorand, Adam, those are the A's. What's the B? Bitcoin. Uh, near, even though N is not in the but near is in the the bomb bucket. Okay. So when you're, and again, it doesn't matter what I like. It's what you guys gotta you gotta own your own portfolio and you gotta be able to sleep at night. But for me, for me, it makes sense. Um, build your portfolio on a piece of paper that's not touching anything else. Then do your balancing, do, do your uh, percentage distribution in your portfolio. Then look at your current portfolio and see which ones of those are filled up, which ones of those are disproportionate. And then that will tell you what's left, what's missing, or what's underweight. And that's where new currency units or staking rewards should be redeployed. Does that make sense? Again, you can do it any way you want. That's the way I've done it, and it has worked out really well. Okay, Suze, what up? Uh, let's see, let's go, uh, go and survive. Uh, is looks going to survive? I don't know. Um, my advice has always been that after that first repricing and leading up to the second repricing, you want it to be out of looks. I don't know if anybody's using looks. This is the problem. I don't know. 
they're just people are not leaving OpenSea. It is what it is. Doesn't make it good. It just it is. Is looks rare a better platform? Absolutely. Is it decentralized? Ish. Ish. Um do they pay like kind of a cool rate of return? Well, right now it's probably for the looks token, you're getting ugh, it's not great. 55%. It's not bad, but for that token that could be a, t a 10 or a 20 cent token, I mean, and this token is all over the place. It's wacky and volatile and and and, and weird and stay away. Me, me, I'm staying away. I just don't feel comfortable with it. There's, they're not getting people to use, people are just not using Looks Rare. It sucks, it's a great platform, they're just not using it. I don't know what to say. I wish, I wish I had better Looks Rare outlook. Um, did you already answer Steppen? I don't, I don't know, um, I don't know what Steppen is. I haven't really looked at it. Um, these, the whole, everything after HODL, you know that was a misspelling, right? The guy meant hold. And he just mistyped it and everybody went with it and it became like a meme -y thing. And then there's Biddle instead of Build. Anytime they're, they're, people are doing funny things with consonants and all that, I just don't think you need to do that. I just don't – that's just that's just not at all interesting to me. And so I don't know. When, you, when you're flippant with your marketing, when you're flippant with your branding, a very good chance that you're flippant with everything else about your company. Like at the very first thing I see – look, man, if you meet someone with no teeth – you just make some estimations about them. If you see people with dirty, dirty shoes, hey, I'm a working man. That's fine. Have another pair of shoes in your car that you put on so that you don't look like you just got out of a coal factory. Like the way you present yourself is unfortunately the way the world kind of estimates you. And if that estimation is, ah, oh, it's a person that's unkempt, they make bad decisions, they eat candy all the time, they probably don't have any protein in their diet, or they just, they, they smoke meth or whatever, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what the reality is. It's the perception. It's the perception. Um, two things. One, Florida Dan, that's a great question. Um, I don't think ever. Okay, Litecoin, um, incredibly scammy behavior in the Litecoin ecosystem. Why? Well, Charlie Lee, who, very smart guy. Um, I'm not a hater of Charlie Lee, although he did pull one of the biggest lies, like the kind of thing that would have thrown anyone else in jail these days. He told everyone, I've never been, he pulled a Brad Garlinghouse. He said, I've never been more bullish, and he's and at a near high, he sold all of his Litecoin, and he's like the head developer. He sold all of his Litecoin, and by the way, it was a fork of, of Bitcoin. They didn't do anything new or dramatic or exciting. It's a fork. They made uh, four times as many tokens. They made the blocks one-fourth as big, really fast trans really fast block sizes, like block times. That was it. Nothing, nothing else. And they've done a couple little weird upgrades and security features. No one gives a crap. He sold everything. And he goes, well, I just want to be, you know, I don't want people to think I, there's impropriety. I don't want people to think that, like, I'm an insider and all that. So wait a minute. You believe in this project, but you sold everything you have at the high. Everything. And you, and, we, and, and then we're supposed to believe that you're bought in. So no, uh, there's, there is to me nothing exciting about Litecoin. There's even less exciting about Charlie Lee. He is a very intelligent, very scammy dude. Very scammy dude. And just and just you just listen to what he says. He's, it's just very scammy. Their partnerships are garbage. They're not, they're not meaningfully contributing to the future of digital assets whatever web3 looks like the future of society a kinder benevolent more more gentle whatever no none of that um grayscale has a fund for it because grayscale has a fund for almost everything that has any kind of market cap look they've got they've got stolana in there listen a couple more days they'd have probably had because remember grayscale's digital currency group if i'm correct those guys aren't geniuses these are the dudes threatening the SEC to sue them to get their to get their crappy trust unwound into a, a an even crappier spot um, ETF for Bitcoin. So they're they're big. They have a lot of currency units. Don't confuse big for intelligent. Don't confuse a big hedge fund for having competent fiduciaries. Don't confuse a big company like MicroStrategy 
for having a well thought out macro strategy. What? Jungle, you can use that. Don't confuse micro strategy for having a well thought out macro strategy. I crushed that one. You guys know it. You guys feel it? Do you feel like, did you guys just shake just then? Did you vibrate on the inside? It's probably something different. So yeah, um, yes, they have a fund on it. No, it's not a coin that I would own. And is it make, does it make it a bad, are, are there probably some cool devs there? Maybe, but look, the quality developers are on quality projects, except for the ones that are stealing from you. If you have quality developers on non-quality projects, you should ask yourself as a human, why are they there? Why are they there? I'll tell you a quality developer on a non, mm, on a, on a basically a non-quality project right now that is stuck and he, and he would be doing the world a service if he was anywhere else. David Schwartz. That guy is drowning over at Ripple. Schwartz should be at a real project building the future. That That is a, an incredible waste of intellect. He might as well be driving Uber. So, huh. Anyway, uh, Mega Pack, hello. Tio uh, Maromba, hello. Uh, Askus, hello. Kryptonic80, also hello. Hello to all of you. Hello. Hello to all of you. All right. Um, tube that pipeline, what's going on? Now Grant's artist, also what's going on? Okay, cool. So as we look at these markets, there is nothing quite too exciting. Bitcoin has been flat. Everything has been kind of flat. Algorand is down. Okay, I bought yesterday. So last week I bought... Matic, Near, and Algorand. This week I bought, oh, by the way, part of the bomb, the A bomb, the M in bomb is Matic. Okay, they now have a deal with eBay that they're gonna be doing. Uh, eBay was working with Tezos, S can that. Now they're doing, well, they didn't S can it. They talked They talked well, but they're, they're, they're gone. Um, they're now using, eBay will be using Matic. Meta through will be using Matic underneath Instagram. So, I mean, common sense. I think this is probably being overlooked quite dramatically. Should Matic be beneath the price of Polkadot? No. Should Matic probably be above all of these assets? Maybe. I know it sounds crazy. We don't talk Matic a lot, but the, the proof is in the partnerships. You've heard that silly saying. I mean, there's a reason why these other these other entities are leveraging Polygon. They're they're leveraging the Matic token. They're, it's not it's not accidental. It's not they're not gambling. I think it's important. Um, so th this this is an uploader episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I haven't cussed too much. So this one stays. We win. We, we stay, we exist. <laughs> Polygon's making loads of deals. It's a good, that team over there, that marketing team, these other companies, man, if, if the people at Algorand had a team like the marketing team or, or, the, or the enterprise team over at Matic, phew, the world would look different. But I think, so yesterday, okay, so again, yesterday I was adding Matic and I was adding Algorand. And I think I add I added Algorand a little heavier because I'm a little, it's a little weaker in my portfolio. And again, I'm just dollar cost averaging. All these, all these apparent relative prices, they don't, they don't mean much, but they do sway me as I'm dollar cost averaging. I do tend to lean into the assets that I believe have, have been mispriced even more. So I believe there's there's some mispricing. I mean, you're you're, you're giving me Algorand at a 58% one year discount, which means I get a get out of year free card. I, I get to go time warp back a year and buy quality assets. Think about what that means. This is like, and again, I'm not telling anyone to do anything, but the way I look at it is I get to go, I get to, I get an asset that just did a deal with Facebook, okay, ah, Meta, and eBay. Bitcoin is not even on eBay. You guys get this, right? They talked about that for years. Bitcoin hasn't made it to eBay. And now we got Matic underwriting NFTs, infrastructure, picks and shovels. 
So I get to go back one year. I go back in time a year. I get to buy Matic at 64 cents, knowing they're doing work on Instagram and they're doing work on eBay. And these are real deals, not BS, real. And you're going to give it to me at a 63% discount. I will take that. Thank you, sir. And you're going to give me Algorand. And look, they got like 13 or 14 enterprise deals in the part in, in the pipeline. Government currency enterprise deals. Central bank digital assets. Central bank digital currencies. However you want to say it. Digital fiats. Stable proxies. Whatever. Already in the pipeline. You That is, to me, that is materially important. So, yes. Yes and thank you. Paul, what's going on? Oh, not this guy again. Dang it. <laughs> it's always this guy. I'm going to put you in timeout. You've been timeouted, sir. Actually, I don't want to timeout. I just want to I just want to erase it. Oh, here we go. Block user. Ugh. It's weird. I guess this is I guess it's the crypto ones. They think everybody's like so pervy. I maybe crypto people are pervy. Are we pervy? Are we pervy mega pack? Are we pervy Hong? Are we pervy Teal? Krypton? Are we? Are we not pervy? All right. Um, anyway. Paul, good to see you. Um, yeah, man. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm Rain. I am Aim Rain. Aim Rain. I am Rain XL. I don't know. I hope I got it. No, but yeah, there's zero pervs here. <laughs> Jerry. I know Jerry was like waiting like, oh, we're pervs. Oh, we perv like a mofo. <laughs> we perv, bro. I perv. Impervious. Valeri, what's up? Cyan, what's going on? Is that, is that a row? <laughs> oh, old Rao. What a dick, man. Old Jack, what's going on, buddy? Uh, okay, so um, to make it easier, if you guys have a question, put because I'm I'm looking at like three different chats, which is why sometimes you see me bouncing around. Um, put a big Q, so I can like that'll like my brain will go ah Q. There's a question, and I'll and I'll try to get to it. Okay, it rubs the lotion on its skin or it gets the hose again. Yes, of course. YOLO, what up? <laughs> Only certain pervs. Um, okay, so cool. Listen, the reason uh, I posted those two videos, one in particular, the NFT video, the one from Chicago, why? Because it's a cool 30 minute discussion about NFTs. I think it makes NFTs easier. And when people are like, I don't know, what is it, NFT? And you don't wanna go through and you don't wanna talk for 30 freaking minutes, just give them a link to the video and say, here, bro, here, let, let, just, just listen and shut up and eat popcorn, man. Okay. I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm gonna tell you guys something and it's big. It has nothing to do with crypto. Okay. This big, I'm going to see a movie tonight. It's a sneak preview. It's a sneak, sneak, sneak preview. I'll give you a hint. Let's see if anyone can guess what it is. Anybody out there with any kind of life, any kind of blood in you, you know who my, well, you know who my avatar, my spirit animal. Okay, yeah, that's that's one hint. It's also my avatar on Oculus when I play paintball. Okay, so those are the two hints. It's it's number four in the series. It's playing tonight. No, Top Gun. <laughs> I am going to see Top Gun. I'm quite excited about it. No, no. This stomps on Top Gun. This, this makes cold, dark, pervy, sweet love to Top Gun. No, no, no. No, this member, th th this movie is different. This movie is transcendent. It comes out, I'll give you another hint. It officially releases next March, March 2023. Unsung, what's up? Any thoughts about Theta? I like Theta. I just don't know. I just don't know how Theta scales meaningfully. Um, no, no, no. That's my gender. My gender is the attack helicopter. My gender is attack helicopter. My spirit animal is John Wick. <laughs> that's right. Stress relief nailed it. I get to see me and my buddy, me and Diego. Uh, who's my homie? And I'll tell you guys, I'm gonna have an, an I'm gonna do an interview with Diego at some point. Diego is actually he's a bit famous if you're in the music, and uh, he's yeah, 
John effing Wick, bro. Anyway, me and Diego are going to see, he's my movie homie, me, him, and Lucio. And also, um, I go with Aaron, my buddy, and Kat. But on this particular movie, John Wick 4. Oh, yeah. John Wick 4, bro, tonight. It's going down in Orange County. They made us sign 45 NDAs. Dear God, it's going to be like having an alien in my chest not to talk about it. But I'm not going to talk about it. Except I might. Nope. No, I won't. Anyway, that's going to be fun. That's It's one of those, I mean, it's John Wick, bro. Anyway, whew, I had to get I had to get that out. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I had to get it out. Um, okay. <laughs> Jurassic Park. No, Jurassic Park's coming in a few weeks. No, uh, John Wick 4. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I am very excited. <sighs> okay, we're back to crypto. All right. Um, live stream. God, they would they would have me hogtied and light up. Um, okay. Uh, so you guys know what's going on in the markets. It's nothing super exciting. This is when you build. This is when you take your time. This is when you really look at your quality assets. I, I'm going to urge again. I'm going to urge you again to be very careful about the people that you're listening to. Um, don't, um, uh, don't fall victim to get in, into Twitter battles. Twitter is not a place where you exchange no, uh, knowledge or common sense. Some people go on Twitter with good information. Most people, there is no fin twit. There's no finance on Twitter. It's just a place for people to vomit out crap. Um, some of the crap is good. Most of the crap is bad. Just understand that it's all just different versions of crap. Everybody here has to be their own hedge fund manager. You are all your own hopefully confident fiduciary. You have to manage your own currency units. You have to manage your own box of value, right? Whatever you want to call it, however you want to frame it, it's yours. You can't blame anybody else, which means you don't need to be leveraging anybody else other than ask why. Someone says, oh, I got this. Why? Why'd you get it? Oh, because this and this. Why? All the way down. Distill it all the way down. Okay? Um, do not be leveraging what people do. You listen to what people do, and you're gonna be you're gonna be left at sea, listless, floating, waiting to be you know terminated. Block user, God, there's just an endless supply of these douchebags, and they and you know what they do? They all they do it from constantly different. Um, it's all different uh, web, websites and stuff. So the, the the naked girls thing just keeps on keeping on. <sighs> um. Okay, uh, Red Oak Craftsman, uh, question, where do you stand on DOT? I like Polkadot. I like the team. They're not, they're not marketing very well. They're not communicating very well. And it doesn't seem like their whole parachain thing is all that exciting. I don't see a lot of companies. For instance, why aren't there, why aren't we hearing about the hundreds of parachain, potential parachains that are all competing? We're not. And that's a little bit problematic. Um, I'm just worried that they're not going to get a lot of uptake. I think that people are looking and they're basically saying Ethereum is, even though it sucks for many reasons, it's working fine for what we're using it for. Most, you know, most of early DeFi, you know, garbage and junk was Ethereum. Now they went to where things were cheaper. So a lot of DeFi went to Binance chain. A lot of, there was some DeFi on Tron. It was all garbage. There's some DeFi on Tron. A lot of DeFi went to Stolana before they realized it was a complete scam. The developers steal and the project can't scale. And they completely sacrificed everything for throughput, which is silly anyway, because there's all sorts of log jams and quagmatic situations that allow, like the, the two computers at, 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 the, at the developers' offices of Stolana that are plugged in together, that's not the speed that Stolana operates. Although when they get unplugged, apparently the whole network goes down. So... There's a lot of things not to like about Stellana. However, it might end up just existing as an NFT platform. And you know what? It could probably find some success there, but it's not going to find Ethereum-like success. And I would not be waiting for $2,000 Stellana. I probably would be waiting for like 20 buck Stellana. Uh, and, then, and then what will happen is eventually, as Enterprise comes in, they're not going to use – no one's, no one's going to build on Stellana if they're serious. No company could be talked into that because no company – you can't pull the wool over someone's eyes and say, like with, with Polkadot, 
You can't say, oh, we have hundreds and hundreds of projects building. Well, where are they? Well, they're building. Where? Where are they building? See, with Ethereum, you can prove there's a, there's a vibrant, huge, giant ecosystem of people in, and they're playing in the, uh, the NFT space. And there's some DeFi and things like that. So there's it's, it's nothing wrong with Ethereum, at least right now, it's working fine. These other layer ones, there's gonna be a little battle and you're gonna have two or three of them exist. I think Algorand is gonna be the asset that's used for central banks and banking institutions. I think Algorand is going to out Ripple, Ripple, okay? I think that uh, you will see some other, these people keep calling. You're gonna see some other people um, in the enterprise space pouring into Cardano, especially governance as a service. And that's fine. That's a completely separate business that they can have that has nothing to do and it's not competing. It's not really competing with Ethereum. And this is another thing people don't, this is probably the main point of today. A lot of these protocols and that's and Red Oak, that's a good question to kind of spur this. A lot of these protocol layers, you think they're competing, they're not. They're not competing with each other. Cardano's not competing with Ethereum. Ethereum is competing with Ethereum too, right? They're competing with their own upgrade cycle. There's a good chance that no one ever stops using Ethereum in the NFT space. It's just, it may just be the way things are, right? For at least the foreseeable future. And that's okay. People have accepted that for right now. However, that won't work to scale into perpetuity. That won't work to scale into the future. Does that make sense? So they're going to have to do some things to make that platform be able to successfully onboard what the world might look like NFT wise. Give me just a second. These fucking dudes just enter the, <laughs> they just come in like, hello. Yeah, do whatever you need, Jesus. All right. So these protocol layers are not competing with each other. They're not directly competing. Polkadot's not really competing with Cardano. Cardano's not really competing with Ethereum. Now, at some level, there's cross competition, right? Like in DeFi, who's gonna win DeFi? Well, they'll all win DeFi because the future is not one chain. It's many, many chains. You'll have a business process. You want, you, you want a transaction to happen and it will go across the rails where it makes the most sense. And that could be at different times of the day, different platforms, different protocols. That's okay. Listen, when you get when you get electricity, sometimes it runs across three different company rails and stuff like it's okay. It's okay. You buy you, I bought American Airlines tickets through Expedia. So so what? Everybody gets their everybody gets their little piece, right? And that's okay. Theta VIP, good to see you. So the world is not going to be, it's not one, it's not a one winner. It's not a one to take, to rule them all kind of idea. I think that it makes more sense if you look at the world and say, what are the quality assets? There's probably a glut of them that succeed to some extent. Some of them will, will, will run along, but, but they're not yet. And no, I don't have a Patreon group. I used to, uh, no, I don't. So sorry. Um, yeah, so I haven't talked about Resonate DAO with Fetch. I don't even know what Resonate DAO is. I'm not a big fan of DAOs because most of the DAOs are not actually DAOs. Um, but yeah, Dubai, I don't, I don't know about, um, I don't know about it. Uh, to be honest with you, I've not been super excited about Fetch's communication strategy either. I think that they were a little weak at marketing. A lot of these companies are weak. Um, but you know what? When you see that weakness, that's when you know there's opportunities. La Huerta, what's up? That's when you know that there are opportunities. Because if this was all solved and settled, there's no more, there's nothing left to be made. There's no more juice in the fruit. Does that make sense? You have an opportunity to win on these things because they are being, in my opinion, misvalued, therefore, while they're currently, pri the price is accurate, I don't think that price on many of these assets reflects the underlying value proposition stretched out over the next three or four years. 
This is what me thinks. Uh, international blockchain, IBC, it's the uh, Cosmos ecosystem. Cosmos is dope, man. Cosmos is great. That's why Adam is one of the A-bombs. Okay, let's call it a day. Um, this, is, this is a short one, just a quick one. Have a great day. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. Don't do anything. My poor insolvent drunk, strung out on meth, grandmother wouldn't do. I urge you to do two things. Uh, give the video a like if you liked it. If not, you won't hurt my feelings, but give it a like. And, and uh, check out those videos, the ones from the summit, because the people that went to the summit had to pay a crap load of money to see those. And you did not have to pay thousands of dollars. Yes, that's right, thousands. You did not have to pay thousands. So since you did not, free. One, two, free, my favorite price. All right, and on that note, um, we will see you again. Let's see, tomorrow and Friday are both um, Monday morning live streams. And there are also links for that below. We will see you there, or we won't, or we just won't see you there. And that's and that's that. Um, so yeah, do the right thing, man. Do the right thing. It's easy. It's easy in life. All you have to do is do the right thing over and over <laughs> into perpetuity.